So um, today's topic is transistor biasing and AC coupling, and this is all for for the the transistor amplifier that we talked about last time. Uh, so let me let me just draw the amplifier. So here's a RC, and let's for definiteness let's call this 10K. Uh, here's our transistor. Uh, this is our plus five volt power supply from our uh, M2K device. And this is the emitter resistor, RE. And let's just for definiteness, definiteness, let's call that 1K. And ground. And let's see, we take the output there, but we're also going to look at the voltage here. And we're going to put the input here. So I'm going to color code those in a way that hopefully will make a little bit of sense. So I thought I had four markers going simultaneously. Let's see how see if that lasts. So let's call this V in. And I'm going to keep that in pink. And V out is in uh, blue. And this VE, I want to draw this in orange. This is the voltage at the emitter of the transistor. All right, so the last time, oops, ah, the last time we saw, last time we saw that if you had some um, delta, if you took V in and you wiggled it by some delta V in, so for example, you, you have some V in at some level and you put a little sine wave on it, um, this amplifies it and you get uh, RC over RE and you get a negative because we'll see in a second, uh, I'll review all this, why uh, when V in goes up, V out's going to go down. And that's what little wiggles in, in V out give you. And, and for ours, we're going to amplify by a factor of 10 here. Um, and the issue that we're going to deal with all of today is not just the, the wiggles, but the actual DC level, the average level of the signal. So when you turn the amplitude of the sine wave all the way down, uh, these things have to live somewhere. And then when you turn the amplitude of the sine wave up, as you make V in bigger and bigger and bigger, V is going to get bigger and bigger, and V out's going to get a lot bigger and bigger. And eventually, things are going to start running into each other or running into the power supply or running into ground. And you're going to run out of room. So the question today is just where, where should we put these constant offsets so that uh, we have the most wiggle room. All right, so let me, let me just draw a picture of, of what's going to come out here. So here's, here's our voltage as a function of time. Um, nothing in the circuit can go above the supply voltage. So this is 5 volts here. And um, I'll draw a couple of things, but I'll draw them in a slightly different order. So let's just start thinking about constraints here. What's the lowest that VE can go and still, still uh, make any sense here is, is ground. So VE has to stay a little bit above ground. So let's start VE at ground and have it, have it go up down like this. So it's not, not quite at ground at all. We'll leave ourselves a little bit of wiggle room. And V in, because there's a diode drop here, V in has to always be 0.6 volts above. So V in is just going to track along with, with V E. So this is V in. This orange one here is V E. And let's think about V out here. So uh, when these have some some average level that we're going to care about. That's that's the bias in, in the bias that I talked about. Okay. So when VE is as low as it can get, when VE is basically zero volts, um, there's no current going through this emitter resistor. 
And so that means there's basically no current, very little current going through this collector. And, and so if there's no current going through the collector, then there's going to be no voltage drop across this collector resistor. And so V out is going to be five volts minus nothing because there's no current flowing because we've made VE zero. So in this very first point here, um, V out is going to be at its maximum. So in the limit where we literally push this all the way to the bottom is going to be five volts, but I'll, I'll leave a little bit of room here. And as VE e goes up, there's going to be current through this resistor, which also means there's going to be current through this top resistor. And if there's current through the top resistor, the voltage drop down from five volts is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And the biggest that we can make this voltage drop is to where, so, okay, so VE, VE is going to go up, V out is going to go down. And the, the highest we can push this is where this one uh, comes all the way down and they just barely touch. So this was our condition for having the transistor on. So the top of the transistor always has to be at a higher voltage than the bottom of the transistor. Otherwise, you know, because the transistor is a valve, not a pump, it can only let through more or less current. It can't make voltage where there is no voltage. So when it's letting through its maximum amount of current, um, this V out uh, just barely touches VE. And then we'll just continue this for, for a couple cycles here. Now, I haven't exactly drawn this to scale because if these were really 10K and 1K, then this amplitude here of the orange uh, would be a tenth of the amplitude of the blue, whereas really it's more like a third or a half, depending on how well I've drawn it. So you know, your, your mileage will, will vary when you actually build the circuit. But we want to calculate these points here, uh, these average values, given all the constraints that are going on. And eventually, we want to calculate what, what the best bias value, what the best average value for V in is. But for 80% of this analysis, I'm just going to ignore that and worry about the orange and the blue. And at the end, I'll just add 0.6 volts. And that's going to give us this, uh, this pink here for V in. I don't know how well you can see the colors. Let me see if I can. Yeah. I have a slightly different power supply here, which I can adjust a little bit. But sometimes if I make it too bright, the colors really wash out. Yeah, well, you have to do, you have to use your imagination here. Um, OK. So let's consider two points here. One point is, is this dot, the dot here. And then the other point is, will be the star here. So the, the dot corresponds to VE is close to 0 volts. And again, when V is close to zero volts, there's no current here. And since this is just a valve that's letting through current, uh, it means there's no current up there. So V out is around five volts. Okay. Now for the star, the star, we have the condition that V out has to be bigger than VE. And it's actually bigger than VE plus a few tenths of a volt. So in order for the transistor to really be working, you, you need to leave a little bit of a gap here. But just to, to sort of get an order of magnitude uh, estimate for, for where we should put all these levels, I'm just going to leave this um, the way it is. All right, so let me remind you how we how we solve this, this circuit. So if, if we already have a VE, then there's a there's an IE. Let me write, I guess I'll write this in line here. So IE 
And if we have an IE flowing, we also have an IC flowing up on top here. And uh, IE and IC are, are really close to each other, right? They're maybe off by 1% because there's a little bit of extra current coming in from the base. I'm not gonna worry too much about that. But let's, let's work out. So VE, this side of the equation is gonna be uh, IE times RE. And it's just the voltage drop across this resistor is IR. And V out is gonna be five volts minus IC times RC. And this has to be bigger than that. And uh, these, are, these currents are gonna be pretty much equal to each other. And what are the currents gonna be equal to? Uh, the currents are going to be equal to, if we want to write everything in terms of voltages, we can write that this, this current here is VE over RE. So I'm just sort of, maybe I'm backing up half a step. And IC is really very close to IE, except for this tiny 1% of current that's flowing in from the base. Now let me just plug in for, for IC and IE everywhere. So let's see, here, five volts minus, okay, IC is about IE, IE is about VE, VE over RE, and RC is still there. And this is all still greater than IE, which is VE. Oh, let me just say that. This whole side of the equation is still VE. I should have just left it for VE always. IE. All right, so let's let's solve for VE here. So if I move if I move VE over if I move this uh, over to the other side of the equation, I get that uh, five volts has to be bigger than VE VE times one plus RC over RE. So RC over RE, that was our gain. And so this is, this is about 11 for us. So if I just divide by 11, that means VE has to be less than five volts over 11, which is something like, uh, what do I wanna say here, four point, uh, uh, oh, 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 0 0.4, uh, 0.45 volts. Okay, so this was all for the star. This is all for the biggest it can get. So the smallest it can get is, is zero. So V, you know, VE has to be bigger than zero. V out has to be less than five volts. And VE has to be less than this, otherwise they, they start to touch. So now, now we have the size of this here. So this, this top, top line is at 0 0.45. And then that makes the middle um, something like 0 0.0.225. That's the middle. And then you could just add 0 0.6 to that, and that makes the middle of the pink here 0.825. And that's more, more decimal places than we really need, especially because there were some approximations here. Um, and now we can figure out the middle of, of the top part, too. So we know the bottom of this top part is somewhere around 0.25, um, which, which makes the blue, uh, the amplitude of this blue thing is about four and a half volts. And half of that would be 2.25 volts. And if I subtract five minus 2.25, I get Five minus three is two, so two, two point seven five. Yeah, that's right. That's the middle of the blue. So when you, oh, sorry, go ahead.
I might have done that math wrong because I didn't actually write this down in my notes. Was, was there somebody who had a question? I just had a quick question. Where did we get 11 from? Ah. Like for the VE when you did 5 by 11? So that's 1 plus the ratio of resistors. So for, for oh, got it. Okay. K, just for our particular example, or 10K and 1K, where we want a, 10, a 10x amplifier, there's a factor of 11 there. And you can see that really constrains. The input has to be in some narrow band. I, actually, the input has to be in some narrow band that's offset from 0. And it can't get very big. And then the output is in some, some band here that's centered at some random, random place here. Um, and then this intermediate VE is, is somewhere. So, so when you build this circuit, which is one of the things you'll do, so you'll build a current source and then you'll build this. Um, the first thing I suggest is just building it like this. And you know, maybe you don't want 10K and 1K, maybe you'll, you'll use the resistors they suggest. But don't add any any stuff. Instead, connect your your yellow wire, your your W1, your input, directly to the base of the transistor. And look at not the input, but look at VE and V out. And make your input be a sine wave that is offset. And you can do this in scope. You can change the offset it's a little bit. And for whatever reason, it likes to change the offset in units of one volt, but you can type in whatever offset you want. You don't have to type in this offset, but you know, try, try typing in a few different offsets and try uh, making the sine wave bigger and smaller and look at the outputs. And you'll see that um, if, you, if you make your sine wave a little bit too big, it'll start to clip on the top or, or these will run into each other and they'll flatten out. They'll clip, it'll clip on the bottom. And you know, kind of move the offset around to try to find the offset where the uh, you can have the biggest sine wave and still have still have everything come out. Uh, so that's that's sort of the first step is just to like manually futz with all these these biases. And and here I went through the calculation of what they should be at least for this case. And you know again we made a bunch of approximations so your your actual numbers will vary a little bit. But uh, you know this sort of roughly gives the picture of of uh, where things should be and why. You know you. You can't, you can't have your, you can't have things go above your power supply or below ground, and you can't have the top of the transistor always has to be higher than the bottom of the transistor. Those are basically the two constraints. All right, so that's that's the topic of, of biasing, and the second topic is, all right, well, it's kind of awkward if you if you just have some random signal. Usually, you have a signal that's centered around ground, right? That's sort of the the default typical signal, some signal signal that's centered around ground. And if you want to amplify a signal that's centered around ground by some factor like 10 and get out a signal that's centered around ground, this isn't connecting it directly here, connecting it looking there is, is not going to work at all. Right? First of all, you, you can't have things go below ground if this is going to still work because the diode is going to just turn off as soon as, as soon as this voltage becomes negative. Um, and, and this output voltage hovering around some random voltage up here is not very good. And so we're going to do a couple things to, to fix this circuit. We're going to add on some things to it to, uh, to achieve that. But I'm going, to, I'm going to erase everything here because I need all this room. So uh, if there are any questions about, about this before we fix the problem, uh, let me know. I'll sort of erase from the bottom here so that the graph is the last thing to go. Now I, I pointed this out to the, the people earlier. Um, today is actually the hardest day in electronics lab. So both the quiz you just took and this thing I'm talking about now and the lab you're going to do, um, dealing with bare raw transistors like we're doing is pretty complicated because of exactly this. You have to deal with this diode drop. You have to deal with all these biases. Um, next time, we're going to introduce op amps. And op amps are secretly made up of a bunch of transistors. And in fact, it's, it's a sequence of circuits. There's the first circuit is a, is a differential amplifier, which looks a lot like this. And the second stage is, is a, a stage of amplification that looks like this. And the last stage is a transistor emitter follower, like you did last time and like you did on the quiz. So we've sort of built up all the components that go into an op amp. 
But once you have an op amp, the way you use them ends up making your lives much, much easier. And so designing circuits around op amps is a lot easier than designing circuits for individual discrete transistors. Uh, let me erase some of this notation here because we're basically not gonna not gonna need it. It's just gonna get in our way. So uh, I should have kept that. All right, so remember, there's two problems we're trying to solve. One is that we don't want to have to offset the input, or we want to build a circuit that offsets the input for us. And the other is that we we don't want an output that's offset. We want to build a circuit that offsets the output for us. Um, this is R C. That's R E. It's actually easier to talk about the second the second thing first. Is to build a circuit that gets rid of the the uh, offset, the DC bias term. So remember that offset term happens at zero frequency. And so if we want to get rid of it, we can just attach a high pass filter to our output. And let me do that. Remember our high pass filter looks something like this. It could, well, you could draw it a couple different ways, but we had a capacitor and then a resistor. So let me draw a little dotted line here to show that we're, this is the new part of the circuit. So let's call this C, um, C and R here, maybe C out. We're gonna have a C in, an R out. There's a stuff attached to the output here. And, and now if you take your new output here, so new out, this new output is going to have is going to be high pass filtered. So as a function of frequency, it'll look like this. And so um, this is kind of new over old output. And as long as you're well above this corner frequency, cutoff frequency, one over two pi R C R out, C out. As long as you're well above this frequency, you know, say, say here, um, you basically get all of the signal you you start with. And and this is called AC coupling, so alternating current coupling, because you've zeroed out the, the zero frequency DC component of your circuit, and you're passing through just the high frequency component of the circuit. And so if you start off with some crazy offset sine wave, what's going to come out is just a, a normal zero centered sine wave. And you know, this is true even though there are no power supplies that go below ground. That's nothing, nothing crazy about that. Um, now the input is a little bit harder. So the input, we, we want to do something similar. We want to offset, offset the input. And to do that, let me well, let me let me draw a in intermediate step. So at the input here, imagine we had our our uh, our new input, our new input which is centered around zero. That's the input we want. And let's let's take this uh, this new V in. E new and connect that to um, well, let me draw it a little bit different. Okay, so V new is going to be purely a, a sinusoidal here, sinusoid centered around ground. And if we connect that to a capacitor, so we're going to make another high pass filter, capacitor and a resistor, C in, R in. But I'm not going to connect this to ground. I'm going to connect this to the point that we wanted to offset the input. So remember, um, we wanted to offset the input. Uh, what was it? It was 0.8 something, right? 
see. O point. Yeah, this was something like plus 0.825, I believe, volts. And now, now let's take this into the, uh, this will go into our, our base. Okay, so why does this work? This is kind of a, a high pass filter. So it's going to pass the sine wave. But it's kind of an, a weird offset. We don't have a, we don't have ground there anymore. Let's just remember back how a high pass filter worked. So the, the reason why a high pass filter worked was there was a resistor here and a capacitor whose impedance z of the capacitor was one over j omega frequency times c. And the, the j just gives us some some phase shifts, which we won't worry about right here. But for extremely low frequency, like for example, when omega is zero, the impedance of this capacitor gets infinitely big. And so if it's infinitely big, it's like a piece of insulator, it's just not there. And you're just connecting the base to this voltage, which was exactly what we wanted to connect it to when, when we had no sine wave. So there's this, this input resistor here, which we'll have to deal with. Uh, that, but that's fine. Our, our base voltage will just be this offset voltage. And now imagine for high frequencies, and again, high frequencies meaning compared to the cutoff frequency here. So for frequencies that are higher than the cutoff frequency of this capacitor and this resistor, um, the, the way we derived this cutoff frequency was we said, well, the cutoff frequency happens when these impedances are equal. And so if you're at frequencies significantly higher than the cutoff frequency, this impedance is really low. And it's like the base has a strong connection to your sine wave and uh, a weak connection to, to, uh, to this voltage here. So for zero frequency, you're going to be connected to this constant voltage. For high frequency, you're going to be connected to the amplitude of the signal you're putting in. And, uh, and this will allow wiggles that you put in to kind of pull around this 0.825 volts and create exactly the signal we want. Now, let me draw, now, now there's an issue here because we don't normally have random power supplies kicking around that are every possible voltage. So here's what we're actually gonna build. So let me draw another dotted line here. I'm gonna build a, uh, so again, we'll start out with a plus five. In order to get this random voltage, we're gonna build a, uh, voltage divider. And then we're going to connect our capacitor to it. And this will be our V, V new. And then into the capacitor. Now let me remind you if I were to put this voltage divider in a, in a box and ask what its stubborn and equivalent is, let's call this our, our top and our bottom. Just the voltage divider, forget, forget the capacitor and the base and everything else. Um, this, this box here, going to be equivalent to a Thevenin circuit where there's some V Thevenin and some R Thevenin and the box around that. Okay, so if we just have our Thevenin model and we don't attach a load to it, there's no voltage drop, there's no current, so there's no voltage drop across this resistor. You go up by V7 and you don't go down by anything. So as long as you don't attach a load to it, the output you get is V7. And so as long as you're not attaching anything to this black box, um, you, or, you know, as long as you're attaching a load that's a resistor that's really big, uh, the output of this thing is 
is going to be B7. And what do we want the output to be? Well, we want the output to be this. So we want, want V7 in to equal 0.825 volts. And what do we want R7 in to be? Well, we want R7 in, we want R7 in to be R in, because that's the thing that connects this 0.825 volts to the rest of the circuit. Connects it to the base, connects it to C in. So it's as if you took this and you connected it to, to C in and to the base. We want this to be equal to our R in. And um, if you remember from the very first lab, um, the R7 in of a voltage divider, even though the, the physical resistors are in series, to calculate the 7 in, uh, the, the circuit that acts like this uh, with, with this particular voltage, is actually the parallel combination. So you could write this as uh, R top in parallel with R bottom. So now you have, once you've picked R in, so you can sort of pick R in to be arbitrary, you know, as long as, as, long as your, um, your next stage is not gonna affect it. And because this transistor is here, very little current actually flows into the base. You don't have to worry too much about that. So say you picked R in to be maybe 1K, then you pick your C in so that your frequencies you care about are passed and frequencies you don't care about are blocked. And once you pick your R in, you have two equations. You have um, the fact that uh, the R in you picked is equal to the parallel combination. And you have the fact that this seven in output is equal to, uh, let me, let me get rid of this. Is equal to the output of this voltage divider. So this is going to be five volts times R bottom over the sum of the two R bottom plus R top. So now you have two equations and two unknowns, and you can solve for once you've selected an R in, you know, say one K, you could solve for R bottom and R top. And then you'll pick the closest resistors that, that give you that ratio. So, so now we've taken our zero centered V in and we've shifted it, we've offset it to be the result of this voltage divider. And as long as you're not taking too much current into the base, which, which you're not because only a, a hundredth as much current flows into the base than flows here. Um, then, then you, you're centering your pink signal at the right level. And this input is wiggling, wiggling it around that level. And this blue signal that's coming off the top here is centered at some random voltage that is just a result of where, where we chose to center this one. And then this high pass filter, this AC coupling of the output is just zeroing out that arbitrary offset that we don't care about. So your, your output is, is also also just going to be a nice zero centered sign rate. Um, and so what I would suggest is when you build the circuit, when you get to this part in the lab, just build the yellow part here. Just build the middle part and drive it directly and offset it by hand in Scopey and, and play with that for a while. And then you can build the, uh, then I would, I guess I would suggest building the blue part next, the output part and then just making sure that it filters it properly and then build the pink part. And you, all the, the component values are, are suggested in the lab. So um, you can play with that. But, but before you build the full circuit that's in the lab, just build the amplifier part and drive it directly with an, an offset that you've manually selected. That's the one addition that I would suggest today, which, which is not actually in my, my text, but um, hopefully when you, Come to this part in the lab, you'll, you'll notice it. Um, and that's that's it. That's all I have to say for today. <laughs>